like to introduce Kimberly uh, Roberson, uh, who she's worked extensively on environmental activism at Sane Freeze, the Nuclear Democracy Network, Calper Greenpeace, and then as a certified nutrition educator at recovery programs in the Bay Area. She served on the board of National Association of Nutrition Professionals and as a founding officer for the California chapter. Kim has lobbied for health and environment on the state and federal level and wrote the first petition calling for radiation monitoring of food in 2011, which led to the formation of Fukushima Fallout Awareness Network. She's authored Silence Deafening, Fukushima Fallout, A Mother's Response, and is co-creator of the Radiation Awareness and Protection Talk program. She consults at New Health Design. So please take it away, Kim. Hi, Mary Beth. Thank you so much, everyone. I really want to give a special thanks to our presenters and guests for taking up your precious weekend time today to be with us. And I hope you go away from this feeling informed, and I'll have some actions going forward to help empower us. Adam, Cindy, Mary Beth, and Jim all did wonderful presentations. And I wanted to just give a little bit of background info to people who may not know very much about FAN, because I think we have newcomers here. FAN is the Fukushima Fallout Awareness Network. And just I'll try to be as brief as possible. FAN's mission over the past four years has always been the same. And we remain a coalition of groups and concerned citizens who share information and resources in response to the ongoing radioactive fallout at Fukushima and then act to find solutions. And we're committed to holding U.S. agencies and elected officials responsible for protecting the food supply. And we also network with people in Japan as well. In fact, a few women who came from Japan after the disaster started were very much a part of helping us write our citizen petition, one woman in particular, and we couldn't have done it without them because they came here and said, wait a minute, we're leaving a country contaminated with radiation to come to the United States, which, which allows 12 times the amount of radiation. So that really helped to focus us in our work when we filed our citizen petition in March of 2013. Now, our current campaign supports the FDA petition. We would like to branch out more into citizen monitoring, which just came up a few moments ago. We do have resources on our website. We will be building up more around that. There's a great group called Fukushima Response with John Bertucci and Gina Brooks that have been doing a lot of work on um, citizen monitoring of food. So we'd like to put people in touch with them as well. And our current um, citizen petition, as Cindy and Jim were saying, lowers or seeks to lower the current allowable levels of radiation in the U.S. food supply. It's currently the highest in the world, and it's only a recommendation at that, which is like having no binding level at all. It's like having really no protection at all. So, you know, we just finished up a week of actions culminating with today's event but we still have much more to do. We had two press releases in this past week. We created a new petition, um, which is at our website, uh, www.ffan.us. That's for Fukushima Followed Awareness Network, .us. And I wanted to tell you all that several of us in FAN, um, a few years back, maybe even longer, three years or so, have met several times with aides of senators here in California and in Washington, D.C. We met with Barbara Boxer's aides, with Dianne Feinstein's aides, and in fact, once there was an unexpected face-to-face -face meeting with Senator Feinstein. I wasn't a part of that because I'd been on the phone here in California when Mary Beth and Cindy and others were in her office in D.C. meeting with an aide. When they came out of the office, they ran into her and told her face-to-face, -face, you know, look, we know we have proof that radionuclides have fallen on the soil in California, we had this through University of Berkeley School of Nuclear Engineers. They were keeping, keeping extensive data on their website. Now that data seems to have been kind of shoved further into the website, and there's a breezy video kind of explaining that there's really not much to worry about. The testing's still happening, but they're not finding much. Well, you know, we know better, and, you know, that's what FAN is all about, trying to keep this information out in the, in the public to the best of our ability and continuing with our food uh, petition to FDA 
And I wanted to mention that it just came to my attention yesterday, and Adam had talked briefly about um, the seafood from, uh, I believe it was Vietnam and Malaysia, that's catching the attention of some Democrats. They're concerned right now with TPP and what this means. And one of their names is Rosa DeLorio, and she's a third district uh, senator in Connecticut. She's a Democrat. And she released a statement just two days ago um, telling the Obama administration and Congress that she is very concerned about what would happen with the already backlogged and overtaxed Food and Drug Administration with TPP when we are already struggling to keep seafood as safe as possible. And she did not mention Japan, as, as Adam had said. Japan hasn't come up on their radar yet. We're not exactly sure why, but we're going to do everything we can to change that. So, you know, we t- had our two press releases earlier in the week. I don't know if it caught the attention of someone there or not. But our new petition, we, we are continuing to accept signatures. And we do have a uh, hopefully a meeting coming up this week with aides in Senator DeLauro's office just to let her know what we're doing and to give her as much information as possible to help her um, in blocking fast track. I'm not sure exactly where she is in the general fast track uh, situation, but we do know that Bernie Saunders and Sherrod Brown and Elizabeth Warren are all very vocal and outspoken about TPP. So anything we can be doing to share our petition and press release on their Facebook pages and calling their offices in addition to Senator Wyden's office would be a good idea. So all of this information is at our website. I want to tell you one more time. It's www.ffan.us. You'll find our press releases, all of our petitions. Not only do we have the FDA petition, our new block fast track of TPP petition, we have a move on petition that went up two years ago. We call it the Bye Bye Becquerel's petition. And then there's the first change.org petition that went up on April 1st of 2011 to monitor our food supply so for radiation. So to finish up, I, well, I did hear back. I wanted to tell you that we did hear back from one of the aides in Stoloro's office who said that she extended her apology. She was not able to join our call today, but that she is interested in the work that we're doing. So I feel optimistic that we still have a way to get our, our specific message across to Congress because We've been trying a long time. (laughs) So I wanted to end by asking for your support. We have a donate button on our website, and anything helps. Um, Someone said once we operate on a bake sale budget. We don't even have bake sales right now. So (laughs) anything that anybody can give, no matter how small, we really appreciate it. And we also need people to donate their time and energy as well. So um, thanks again for being on the call. And Mary Beth, I'll turn it over to you. Well, I just wanted to say that um, in the, uh, we'll have the information about um, getting copies of the recording both on YouTube or just to call in and listen on the phone. Uh, we'll post that uh, on the fan site as well as the Facebook page and the Eon a Facebook page in the Eon site and beyond nuclear <laughs> as well. So uh, I hope that, I mean, I think everybody spoke so quickly, and if we had more time, I wanted to, to discuss more with um, Cindy myself. But I think um, it, our time is up, and I, we thank you so much for joining us today. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much.